Um, we're going to work through this exercise. Um, the idea here is that uh, there are lots of different kinds of alarm clocks. And as we've talked about different architectures, let's just assume the different types of alarm clocks represent different architectures for alarm clocks. And I'd like you to take a look at the different qualities uh, in the alarm clocks, and therefore we can choose an architecture that's most suitable for us. Okay? So let's consider three concrete types of alarm clocks. There's a little LED alarm clock for a bedroom, and by LED I'm talking about the little shiny background with the black letters like on an old calculator. Uh, an, uh, sorry, an LED alarm clock is like the red letters that you have in your house. Um, the LCD travel alarm is the one that's like the calculator. And an analog alarm clock like the Mickey Mouse wind up, you know, rings the bells at the top. Do you guys even know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> That's right. You, you, you. Anyway. So, okay. So what I'd like you guys to do, uh, I'll give you about 60 seconds to work with the person next to you, is quickly brainstorm a list of quality attributes that are relevant to alarm clocks generally. So we have two down here about readability and weight. You'll likely need to invent some other names. And what I'd like you to do is sort of rate them for the different kinds of alarm clocks. So in 60 seconds, I'd like you to come up with a list of names uh, with the guy next to you. And then we'll come back together and we'll rate them collectively. <laughs> Okay, I know I haven't given you guys enough time to really get through this, but uh, if somebody could shout out what your favorite, uh, what comes next after readability and weight, what else do you care about? Power consumption. Power consumption. And what else? Cost. Yes, cost. Loudness. Loudness. Usability. Okay, usability. Aesthetics. Aesthetics. Say again. Okay, say more. So resilience to power out of it, okay? Brightness. Brightness, which is sort of readability, yeah. How easy it is to turn off when you're sleepy. Ah, yes. Good one, yes. I'm not the same person when I'm sleepy that I am when I'm awake. Snooze ability. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> nice to know. Okay, so let's talk about these things. For, for weight, which of these clocks, how do they score? Um, the LED plug-in, is, is that heavy or light? Okay. Um, are they, uh, forget, let's just skip past that one. Let's go to the important ones here. Um, let's talk about the loudness. Uh, is there any, um, in, are any of these, can they all be equally loud? Or is there one that's better at being loud than another? Okay, so the, the analog, we're talking about a mechanical bell that we're ringing, okay? There's nothing that actually stops us in an LED uh, plug-in or an LCD from, from having a mechanical bell. So let's get into that trade-off later because that's, that's a rare thing that you see that they have a physical one, a uh, physical connection. Uh, the power uh, resiliency, right? If the power goes out, how, how do they each these, of these three uh, score on that? Generally, unless they have a battery in it, they generally it goes off and then they blink at you, right? Uh, the LCD battery one didn't even know it happened, right? On the other hand, the batteries can go dead, and that's bad too. Uh, and the analog, 
it, they, it has a different problem, which is I need to remember to wind it every night, otherwise I just don't ever wake up, right? You know? Well, not ever. Not, it's not like that. It's not like this is a dirt nap or something. Um, okay, uh, good. So I think that's a, that's a pretty good uh, thing we've got there. So let's think about some trade-offs. So we're part of the uh, super duper user uh, center design workshop, and we're going to make sure <coughs> by tr designing a travel alarm clock, we understand the inherent trade-offs that anybody would have to make. Okay, and the way I think about these things, these are little nuggets of gold. They don't talk about any particular design. They say anyone who designs a travel alarm clock must understand there's a trade-off between these two things. Okay. So is there anything that we've talked about that has that nature, that no matter what alarm clock you build, you're going to have to trade off between this and this? I'll start you out with one. The size of the battery trades off against weight, weight yes, but something else. Battery life. <laughs> with battery life, yes. How long you can go without power, right? How resilient you can be to power outage, right? Because you could put the world's biggest battery in there and it would last a year, <laughs> but you, you may not, you know, that, that's, that's going to be a trade-off, right? You have to work with those. Okay, anything else? Size versus readability possible. Exactly. Uh, the things that make it good for a travel alarm is that it's small and packs into my luggage, but then it's really hard for the, the thing to be read. Okay? What else? How about the, 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 uh, the noise? Is there any trade-off with noise? Battery life. Yeah, generally making more noise requires more energy. Maybe this is not true. Maybe it doesn't, because it seems like they can make really loud things with a small battery. But it does seem to be that there's a battery thing. And certainly ringing an alarm bell, like mechanically, would take a lot of energy. OK, one more. Um, the thing about where you're traveling to, um, like access to power versus like you know, physical interaction, the thing like you have a nail on the block, you've got a wind thing yep. um, every night. But Okay, so I think you guys did a great job here, uh, and I want you to focus not again not so much about the fact that we're designing an alarm clock, but going back to software. If you're building a, a, some software, you want to understand what are the essential trade-offs you have to make in this particular space. Like we talked about usability and security, right? With alarm clocks, there happens to be big battery, good, it makes it a really lousy travel alarm clock, right? You know, so those are the trade-offs here. Okay, um, can you express? Uh, one of the trade-offs using the template, which was because X is a higher uh, priority than Y, we chose this thing accepting the drawback such and such. <coughs> yeah? Uh, because waking up to music is higher priority than allowed, or, you know, than uh, the, the battery life or something like that, then we chose, you know, LED versus an analog. Accepting downside that we like to plug it in. Ah, there's a good one. Okay, so uh, because I really like waking up to music uh, more than I like um, uh, resilience against uh, power interruption, I'm going to choose that the alarm clock be plugged in, accepting the downside that I might not get woken up sometimes. Okay, but the point is there's nothing wrong with that choice as long as you express it that way. Maybe somebody else's design choice is different. Maybe they say, no, I really want to make sure I get woken up, number one. And so therefore, the alarm clock doesn't get plugged in, or it always has a battery, or whatever it is. But if you express it this way, then other it, by the way, you know how long? That's one sentence. And it, it conveys so much understanding that you've got about the domain and your priorities and your choices. And it's so easy. It's not like it's this kablam, you know, here's my architecture document. It's like, here's one sentence for people to do. OK. Um, consider just two uses traveling and at home. Uh, for each alarm clock, how would you describe the suitability to traveling and home use? So let's take the first one. It's the red LED plug in the wall. Um, how suitable is it for traveling and how suitable is it for being at home? Because? And they might have to plug it in in France and they've got funny power. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, and what about the, the travel alarm clock? What are the downsides of using it at home? Does anyone use a travel alarm clock today? I mean, at their house? Yeah? Why, why do you guys use them? Uh, it's just 
Okay? It, and it, it, it's suitably loud to wake you up, and it's suitably visible, and it just hasn't risen to the level of, I'm a college student, I need to pay another $10 for an alarm clock. Okay? Yeah, exactly, right? And, and then how many people now with their cell phones, you just use the alarm on your cell phone? Yes. <laughs> Generation gap. Okay. Uh, which alarm clock would most people choose for home and for travel? Which, 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 which one do you think most people choose for their home? The LED. It seems to be that's a popular choice. Okay. Um, who might choose differently and why? So we already have two guys in the back who don't use uh, the red LED uh, alarm clocks. And for them, it's probably because uh, I just bought another pizza instead of getting a, another alarm clock. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, also, it could be like for me, I have an LED alarm clock, but I choose to use my cell phone because um, my cell phone's a lot more annoying to wake up to, <laughs> but it's a lot uh, easier to actually, it wakes me up more, uh, more often of the time than, uh, than listening to music. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so again, going back to software, the point is that the, the software, here, here's one way to think about it. Unless you have this discussion with your sponsor, <coughs> you are going to assume a certain suitability, and they're going to choose assume a certain suitability, and those might be the same and they might be different, right? They may think, Dude, how could you not think about disaster recovery where when the hard drive crashes, we better have an off-site backup, right? And they're like, what do you mean you didn't use that as the number one priority, right? But if you have these kind of discussions with them, you can find out where they are and you know, what sort of stuff they're assuming as far as what's most important. Um, okay, so which is the best architecture for the alarm clocks? Beat it to death. All of them beat it together. <laughs> <laughs> the big ball of alarm clock mud. Yes. But anyway, so, so the point is, there is no ideal architecture for the alarm clock. It's more or less suitable to the things that you're trying to do. Okay. Okay, so here's, uh, this is sort of important. Um, and you, you, you've heard me, when people have said, for example, reliability, I'll say, say more. Um, imagine that someone says, uh, the alarm clock must be reliable. And you'd like them to re I don't think I discussed this very carefully, but you probably saw it on the slide when it was up there. There's a structured way of writing these things such that you can get people to be quantitative and falsifiable. Um, if your sponsor says the system should be usable, you need to go back to them and say, I need to understand what usable means. Okay? Maybe it means uh, the, the response time is less than half a second. Maybe it's something else. So if somebody says the alarm clock is, must be reliable, can you help me write that as a uh, quantifiable, testable uh, example of, of something, of, 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 a, of a quality attribute scenario? What could they mean by reliable? That the alarm always sounds exactly when you set it for Ah, it always comes on at exactly the right time. What's another example of reliability? That's how you even thought about that one. Up. Yes, it, it actually has the effect of getting you from sleepy to awake, right? Okay, what else? Doesn't die in the middle of the night because it ran out of power or whatever or not. We forgot to wind it, right? What, it, anyway, so these are three distinctly different ones. So um, uh, for, for the last one, what would be a way of writing that in such a way that um, uh, it would be testable to say whether or not indeed I did that, my system does that or not? Okay, yep, and, and still sound the alarm in the morning, right? Okay, uh, you might want to, as, as you start digging into these things, you might be like, or if you don't have 12 hours of battery left, then you start bugging the user like your uh, fire alarm does, right? Where it goes, cheep, you know, like, just to let you know that it's still open. Okay, good. Um, I want to thank you guys for inviting me here today, and I want to thank you, Judy, for, for having me here today. Uh, you guys have been a lovely crowd.